it's my birthday today. Kimberly hasn't called as yet, but I'm sure she will. She always calls up on my birthday, rain or shine, never fails. On one occasion, some years back, she called by, came in and everything. I'm sure she'll call soon. Well, then again, it's getting on late in the day. She's probably distracted. She's been a bit distressed since she had a liaison with that Colin and their condominium broke. I told them not to use those variety ones. They were mail order, not shop bought ones. And you don't know what you're getting, do you? The whole operation could be operated from a lock up in Tenby or something. You just don't know, do you? In my day, we caught it for a respectable period before any hanky panky commenced. I, as an example, walked out with Brian for two and a half months before we did the dirty deed. Filthy habit, copulating on a first date as they do these days. Animals can't hold back, absolutely filthy. You just have to turn on the telly and it's all there for the world to see, disgusting. I saw a man meeting other men in a public lavatory the other night on the telly. Complete strangers, they hadn't even been introduced. So revolting, I had to watch to the very end. If truth be told, I, I like the wildlife programmes best. I'm particularly fond of the polar bears and the penguins, but I don't think you should see them mating, not in your front room. I would have loved to have travelled, but it wasn't to be. Now, where is Kimberly? Where is she? Why hasn't she called? Or maybe she's still upset over the altercation concerning the spillage. You see, I had her and her Colin round for high tea with Mrs Meg Mould and during the dispensing of the fruitcake I nudged Kimberly in error. Well, this caused Kimberly to tip the guacamole bites and the mushroom volivants onto her new white blues on and within seconds it had become a stubborn stain. She was unable to get it off however hard she tried. I said to try biological and a dash of bleach, but would she listen? We almost came to blows, but I'm, I'm positive she wouldn't let such a disagreement stand in the way of my birthday. And it was three months ago. Well, it, it's not that I'm upset if Kimberly doesn't call. I mean, I know she loves me. She said so once in a moment of weakness. I don't mind if Kimberly doesn't call us. I have lots to do, plenty and a half. A comprehensive vacuum is required for starters and the condiment set needs a good sloshing out with soapy water. But my waiting in means I wasn't able to call into the shopping centre today. My curtains have been at the dry cleaners for an age and I feel naked without my curtains. I love the textiles in my home. I, I, I like to run my fingers down the rich velours and the smooth velvets. I like to do it with my fingers. I think I'll put cream of mushroom soup on the hob in a bit. They're very good, the tin soups, I find. With a slice of bread, they're a complete meal in themselves. There's no need for garnishes. I like the cream of tomato best. I, I do like a tidy home, nice and neat. I take particular pride in the state of my kitchenette. It's all in the detail, the little touches, like removing the price stickers from the groceries, removing the contents of the waste paper basket regularly whenever it is in use, a daily wipe down of the cookery books with a damp cloth, that sort of thing. These little touches all contribute to a beautiful home. You always have to be ready and alert. You never know when you may find yourself receiving guests. If truth be told, I was never particularly close to my Ken after the early years of our marriage. He used to drink, you see. A selection of light ales, Newcastle Brown, various stouts. He was never without a drink in his hand. Then he fell into the habit of beating me. It was after I lost my looks, you see. I, I haven't totally lost my looks, you understand. In a dim light, I can still look quite fetching, I'm told. I, I was quite attractive in a plain sort of way in my youth. I could have been the Rinstead fruit pastel girl, people would say, if I rearranged my hair and purchased a new outfit and used a significant amount of makeup. 
I hope I'm not beating my own drum too hard by sharing that. When Ken's drinking became more than a habit and his eye would wander, he would beat me, you see. Quite hard too. See this scar? That was my Ken, that was. He'd beat me with a fish kettle. Copper it was. You thought I snagged my skirt on that visit to Hartlepool and fell atop a trivet, didn't you? Well, in actual fact, it was Ken. The last straw was when he would start troubling me down below, even when I was on. I went to the citizens' advice, and were they a comfort? They were useless. Oh, Kimberly, if only you knew the miserable years with your sodding father I've had to endure. Your sodding bastard father. I once even caught him in our bed with Doreen. You didn't know that, did you? Sweet Doreen, who was always so kind to you. He did the filthy, dirty deed with Doreen, of all possibilities. A drunken pig. A lousy, drunken sop. I, I stayed with him because of you, my love. I knew you'd be so upset, so I stayed with him. But there's only so much a girl can take, isn't there, Kimberly? Don't you think so? Only so much abuse you can take. So... It happened today. It wasn't pre-planned, but he said just one thing too much. That one remark that I couldn't bear. He was so cruel, Kimberly. You don't know what he was like. I didn't mean to do it, Kimberly. He provoked me. He said it, Kimberly. I did warn him. He saw my good name once too often. So I went over to the kitchen utensils and took out the carving knife. You know, Kimberly, that beautiful glistening carving knife we got as a wedding present from my mother, the one he used to carve the Sunday roast with. Those were happy days, weren't they, my love, when we had the Sunday roast. Always on a Sunday, never in the week. I always got you the best cut of beef, never muck and gristle, only the best for my Kimberly. He thought I wouldn't do it. He goaded me. It was his fault. It was always a joke to him. He provoked me, Kimberly. What could I do? So I plunged it in, just like that. Straight through the heart. No fanfare. Oh, why won't you call my little Kimberly? 